Pythorians, and welcome to another episode of Leadership Forum. Today, we're joined by Jan. Jan, how are you doing today? Very well, thank you. What about you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm doing well, thanks. Uh, it's been busy. You know, we're approaching the end of Q2. Uh, it's been a busy quarter, to say the least. And uh, we're going to just bring the community some news about some of the events, some of the tech and uh, use cases. And I know there's a lot of stuff in the pipeline, and there's a lot we can't really talk about. But we're going to talk about what we can today. And um, the first section we're going to actually go into is, is about, about events. Um, so look, we've got one really cool event happening at the moment, which is Blockchain Sao Paulo, which we'll go into, and also Febraban Tech, which is coming up next week. But first off, um, I want you to talk about the actual, I think it's the biggest, one of the biggest events of the year, and that's the um, workshop at the Central Bank of Brazil. Um, unfortunately, the Central Bank of Brazil haven't released a full video to us yet, and we're waiting to translate it you know, understand it, bring it to the community. But while I have you here, it was really important for us to get what happened from you, you know, uh, hear it from the horse's mouth, uh, uh, as they say. <laughs> so um, what happened at the Central Bank of Brazil workshop? Why was this event really important? And yeah, just just give us a lowdown. Uh, yeah, sure. As I've mentioned several times, I think the uh, the Central Bank, uh, the Brazilian regulator is doing a, uh, uh, a nice process about uh, introducing blockchain technologies into uh, you know the market the economy so they are they're not just taking any decision they are actually inviting uh, several players from the market from the academia and others uh, to also join in debate so this is one of the events uh, where this happened so a couple of months ago they opened uh, this call for a workshop and uh, you know ask companies or anyone really to submit uh, a paper about some of the topics uh, that's of interest uh, for them so we submitted a, t a paper about um, using Hatter Net, well, not just Hatter Network, but uh, uh, using a MotorSig wallet for secondary, uh, secondary market control, using a uh, MotorSig wallet instead of doing with uh, smart contracts, EVM, and all that. So uh, we submitted it, it got accepted, and so we were invited there to do this presentation. Uh, it was really nice. Uh, there were, apart from all the other players, you know, very smart people and companies. Uh, that submitted uh, some articles as well. There are also other players, you know, bank institutions and all that. So it was uh, very interesting, not only to be able to talk, you know, to, to this, uh, all these people, but also the regulator was there and, you know, learning from everyone and their their articles, everything that uh, people were were discussing. So as I said, it's it's a very interesting process that the uh, central bank, the Brazilian central bank. Uh, is doing and uh, I, I guess coupled with the recent news that uh, there was this decree signed by the president that the central bank is actually the one that's going to you know regulate the uh, crypto markets uh, it's it, it really paves the way for Brazil to um, to move forward quickly as it's doing uh, in this space so it's it's very exciting very very exciting indeed I think what excites me the most is actually a lot of the events we're taking part in and initiatives they're all with uh, regulatory bodies, you know, like these aren't just like events where you're kind of not not trying to achieve a dream. Like it's actually very real. You know, these regulators are very involved in these events. And uh, yeah. as you said, these work workshop, it was it was, you know, it's it's as clear as day, you know, like uh, presenting to regulators who are actively seeking uh, the advancement of blockchain technology and, uh, you know, as you as you can see uh, with with the CVM for example and the STO project and and so to token is Adora it's it's live it's been live for a year and and now uh, uh, with with this workshop who knows what can come you know um, and yeah there, there is there is some news actually coming in the near future I know a lot a, a lot of things we can't talk about right now but certainly some in, exciting news uh, developing. Uh, around this area and moving on to uh the next event which is the one that's where, where the entire team are, are at now uh, they're in sao paulo and they've, they've had a really busy week to say the least um so yeah blockchain uh, sao paulo what can you tell us about this event yeah it's one of the biggest uh, uh you know more focus on you know blockchain tech uh some more let's say crypto community even though uh it also has people from the government and regulators so uh yesterday we had a panel uh, where we're talking about the uh, tokenizadora use case and we had someone from the uh, brazilian sec the cbm uh there at the panel with us uh marcelo is there representing uh Hatter and the rest of the team as well but uh, he was at the panel with someone from the regulator someone from tokenizadora itself 
so it's interesting that is it's it's this event where there is all sorts of players uh, in in this market, right? Uh, you have the like the crypto community, uh, the more you know builders, uh, but you also have big companies. Uh, you have the uh, the government. Uh, you have the academia because it's actually being held in USP, which is uh, one of the best uh, universities in Brazil. So it's it, it's an interesting mix uh, of an event, and uh, yeah, we've been there. We have a booth. I'm sure a lot of people in the community have right. seen the. Um, uh, the uh, the images uh, excellent work by by Natalia yeah. and uh, yeah very interesting and, and apart from that also this week uh, apart from the uh, the talks uh, the lecture that Marcelo uh, had there he also gave lectures in two uh, important universities in São Paulo uh, in Tele uh, and Ita uh, both very uh, renowned uh, institutions and universities in Brazil so uh, it, it was it was good like in Tele I think also some people in the community might remember from the uh, hackathon that we had i think uh, last month yeah last month yeah yeah um of course in, in telly um i believe it was at the that university uh the hackathon was challenge 23 um and over 20 use cases um uh built around traditional finance it was a really cool event and yeah look touching on what you just said like i can't see anywhere else i know we're, we're focusing on Brazil right now as a topic. And, th and the reason is, where can you see anywhere else globally where you'd have a panel of, like you said, like builders, regulators, like you, you it's, it's almost like you've got the C, it, the equivalent of, you know, uh, uh, Ethereum, right? Uh, a panel with the SEC talking about adoption. Right? <laughs> that's, what, that's what it is. You've got Hathor, a layer one, sitting side by side by the CVM discussing you know, future technology, and it's, it's amazing to hear. And, yeah, uh, and, and as I said, they were discussing uh, specifically the uh, the use case tokenizadora, which uh, it's it's been one year now, right? So it started June, June last year, so we, we just completed at the end of last uh, month, uh, one year of this uh, very uh, relevant, successful use case running. So it's also, uh, let's say, a milestone. Yeah, absolutely. And I believe, um, actually, within Q1, Q2, um, we put a social post out about it had been extended at least for another year with other uh, assets being approved, such as real estate and so on. And it will be nice to see what comes out from those uh, developments and how the next year goes. So, you know, one year went fast, super fast. And it's amazing to have, you know, uh, such a platform under our wing, working seamlessly, yeah. working, you know, flawlessly for a year and we're really looking forward to the to the second year it's 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 i always make this joke that uh the technology usually only uh, attracts news there's only news about technology once something bad happens <laughs> and that's why there there hasn't been so many years so like i have to uh you know hit the wood here so it, it doesn't happen but uh yeah so far so good uh, no problems i know that the daughter team is also expanding so uh, hopefully, we're going to see this uh, this use case grow even more because we already have what uh, forty million dollars uh, in assets uh, tokenized and tokenized assets. So, uh, as you said, we have new asset types, uh, especially in Brazil, or real estate and um, and agriculture. It's it's really important businesses. So, uh, hopefully, they're going to issue some new assets there soon. Absolutely. Um, and moving on to uh, an event that's happening next week. And by the way, with Blockchain uh, Sao Paulo, we were actually a sponsor of that event, a silver sponsor. So um, we, we, we took part in two panels. We had a booth. We had a presence the whole week. And um, unfortunately, I couldn't be there, but I've got great feedback from the team that it was a really successful week. And hopefully we'll be debriefing and, and bringing some uh, substance from that event soon to the community. Um, yeah, so now moving on to February Bantech. So this is a huge event. I, I guess it's a trade fire event as well, based on traditional finance, tokenization yeah. as well. Um, and that's happening, I believe, next week. Similarly to uh, Blockchain Sao Paulo, I believe we have a big presence there where, you know, uh, we're sponsoring. Could you tell us and tell the community about Freber Bantech, what sort yeah. of event it is and why it's important and what, what we, we should expect to happen? Yeah, sure. Uh, as you said, this this is more of a tra traditional finance event, let's say. Feberban is the banking federation uh, of Brazil, so Feberban Tech is their technology event. But uh, as as we're seeing the uh, blockchain taking this industry by storm, let's say you know lots and lots of interest, in, especially in Brazil, uh, for blockchain. You know this is not just 
uh, traditional finance event anymore. So we have a lot of crypto companies, uh, players, uh, that are going to be in the event, including us. So we're also going to be a sponsor. Uh, we're going to be speaking, uh, on stage. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting because a lot of the, uh, technology providers for the banking industry, they attend this event. So that, that's, that's what we're waiting for, right? Because, uh, yeah, we do talk to a lot of the big institutions, the banks directly, but we also have to talk to the ones that provide the technologies for them, you know, currently and also new technology. So that, that, that's what's going to be interesting about this event. Yeah. Um, personally, um, this is the first time I'm in encountering this event. So I'm really interested to see how it develops, what I can learn from it and see how, again, like, look, we, the, the, there is clearly a focus on Brazil, but the, the Latin market is one of the biggest and, you know, us being having such a presence again linked to regulators linked to really really cool use cases in such a big demographic is really super cool so i'd like to see and learn from this event and see how it differs uh from other global events but from what i've heard it is a really cool a really cool yeah, event. it's 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 a huge event and uh it's definitely outside of the uh, spotlights from let's say the more crypto crowd yeah. But it's definitely very important. As I said, uh, most of the uh, technology providers for, for the banking industry go there. It's, it's, yeah. it's really big. Yeah. And again, like you said, uh, what you said about, you know, it, it differs from some of these global big crypto events. Like when you think about it, those events are just isolated crypto events. The events that we're partaking in, these are based on adoption. Like th this is when, like you can even say Web2, bridges with web three, like you, we're, we're crypto companies with banks in one room talking about the future. And, and, you know, not, not saying that some of these other events aren't great because you and I, we've attended a lot of these events, whether it's like, uh, Ethereum, Lisbon, ECC, whatever it may be, they're really cool events, but they're really technology focused within crypto and use cases and, and all, all theoretical, whereas the events we're partaking in are real, you know, I'm not saying that they're not real, but they are, <laughs> they have, <laughs> they have regulators there. They have even like proof, proof of concepts actively running, you know, so it's really cool. And uh, looking forward to seeing how, how Fabriban Tech plays out uh, and learning a lot from it. So Jan, um, that was uh, pretty much the uh, events. And just to let the community know, um, there are more events scheduled for this year and uh, we'll probably be talking uh, about them in another episode of uh, Leadership Forum. And I believe some of the events are global events as well. Uh, really looking forward to talking about those soon. So Jan, moving on to use cases. Um, so I just wanted to start off, you and I both know that there are there is a lot in the pipeline. Uh, unfortunately, there's with, with, with saying that you have the like NDAs and where they are in the, their lifeline, where, where we can speak about things and can't speak about things. So although there's a lot there, there's not much we can speak about right now, but I know that is, there is one we can speak about right now, which I really wanted you to talk about because I personally haven't communicated this one, although there is some communication out there from the partner and that's Kate Capital. Um, so could you tell us uh, who Kate Capital are? Tell us a bit about the history of the project, you know, how we linked up with them. And uh, yeah, just tell us about Kate Capital as a use case. Sure. Yeah. Uh, again, I just want to mention again, the uh, tokenizadores, we're talking about use cases, tokenizadores celebrating one year. It's an incredible milestone. Uh, but Kate Capital, um, they are a tokenization platform that's going to be used for uh, raising money for uh, small and medium companies in Brazil. Like, I'm not sure if a lot of people know this, like in the US, you have so many countries that uh, can enter the uh, stock market, right? Uh, you even have like penny stocks, you know, it's it's very common, but like in Brazil, uh, only like bigger companies uh, actually enter the stock, uh, the stock exchange because it's so expensive. I think we have around 500 uh, companies only in the stock exchange listed there. So, you know, for the smaller companies, it's very hard for them to get access to this kind of funding, you know, to have your stock listed in the, uh, in the exchange. So, uh, what are you going to do? They're going to do this, like, let's say marketplace, uh, where companies are going to be able to achieve funding by tokenizing their, their, let's say stock is going to be a private, uh, fundraising because, you know, uh, if they were to be public, that would be regulator under the, uh, under the Brazilian SEC, the CVM, so they're going to do everything privately. Uh, but it's it's 
what's amazing about this one because uh, I've talked uh, several times uh, with their team and they're building a very very robust uh, technology uh, not just technology but also uh, all the legal part the compliance and all that they are being extremely extremely careful it's not just like a project they're going okay let's let's just run it and see how it goes they're actually investing a lot of time and resources uh, to make it right uh, and uh, a funny thing about this is one of the guys uh, from the technical side who's working on this, he used to be my boss when I was an intern. Uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. so, uh, and, and so this, can, this, let's say, use case reached us through like mutual connections right in Brazil, because uh, even though it's a big country, it's like the technology community, crypto community is, is, is still uh, very well connected. So yeah, that, that's how they came about. Um, had to network and, and saw that uh, it fitted uh, it fit very well their their sure. model and also I think one thing that they're doing as I said they're building this platform which is very robust uh, they're also planning to license it to any third parties who want to run uh, a similar platform let's say you know if they want to run a let's say a white label uh, marketplace for for others. Sure. Yeah, uh, you know it, it sounds really uh, interesting. To be honest with you, I've had some experience with. Um, this prior to uh, entering the space a few years ago, prior to my stint at Hathor, um, I was uh, with one of the Web2 companies I was with. It was a fintech in London. We did a seed round as well. And this marketplace theory you're speaking about, it, it exists, right? But for Web2 companies. And they're very, very valuable. You know, it's such a key kickstarter to any business that is trying to start up. Um, and doing it in a way, it, bringing it to Brazil and bringing it in a way that I guess it's with tokenized assets or whatever it may be, it is, a, a, in my opinion, a game changer or something that could uh, contribute to the business economy when it comes to kickstarting projects. Um, and li like you said, um, the, the one that I had experience with was, with a, was a company called Cedars and fully regulated like the UK, we have the Financial Conduct Authority. It's all it's all uh, uh, done very well. So. The fact you're talking about, you know, Cape Capital is established. They 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 they're going through things properly with regulators, uh, and and they they they're building something that's so good that it could have a white label solution to expand multiple uh, raising uh, uh, platforms, uh, uh, marketplaces around Brazil and Latam. Sounds really good. So um, I'll commit to getting some information in the future and. Uh, creating a proper announcement and bringing the community um, some more information about Kate Capital. I, I certainly would love to hear more since it's something that I kind of... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it still isn't very public because they, I think uh, they, they haven't launched publicly uh, or I think they are in the beta testing. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm sure that it's gonna it's gonna launch uh, publicly very soon, and uh, they're gonna be able to do some more public uh, marketing and communications. And I'm sure that our team is also you and Diego and I are going to be in touch with them to uh, to help them. As soon as I can jump on it, yeah, <laughs> I want to push out there. We, uh, I love giving the community back uh, information uh, and news as soon as it comes in. So thanks for that um, that breakdown. Uh, I know it's kind of a teaser, but. There is some information out there from from Kate as well, Kate Capital. So that's why we thought we'd speak about it today. And um, moving on to the the last section, which we usually go into, which is uh, the technical section. Um, and this section we're going to split into, you know, a, a few common paths we've spoken about in the past. Um, and the first area is surrounding the Hathor wallet. Um, I know we kind of uh, briefly have spoken. In the community about you know uh, the wallet service uh, notifications um which i believe have progressed and have rolled out could you could you give us uh, any updates surrounding the hathor wallet what's been going on since we last caught up with you um and yeah yeah sure in in, in the last episode uh, i talked about uh, i think specifically about the uh, wallet service and uh notifications and uh, as you said it was kind of uh news because it wasn't as I said, even though it wasn't announced, but it's kind of public in our GitHub, it, everyone can see that we're building it. But uh, we started uh, rolling it out. So a lot of the uh, users uh, already have access to these two features. And uh, I'd say that uh, especially the notifications is the one that's more visible. So people should start receiving notifications in their phones whenever they have, uh, they receive a transaction. Uh, with both these features, uh, we do a rollout uh, gradually. So it's not like, uh, like, one day we flip the switch and everyone has it. So we do it uh, little by little. 
uh, getting more and more users from the user base uh, to use it. So we can see if there are any problems, any bugs that need to be fixed before we increase, let's say, the uh, coverage of uh, you know the user base that has access to it. So that that's why probably some users see it, some other users don't see it. Uh, on the wallet service uh, specifically, what you should see is an increase in speed, especially when loading your your wallet. Uh, it's definitely gonna help a lot with the user experience. Sorry, I'm just gonna mute there. That sounds all really <laughs> awesome. Um, so Jan, um, with with the wallet service and and notifications, I personally. Um, I've, it was rolled out to me and it was flawless. You know, I, uh, opened my wallet. I had to put two, um, tabs on, I guess one was for notifications. One was for something else. It updated and boom, done. So guys, um, if you need to get it done or you want to know how generally you just open your mobile wallet and it will just happen automatically. I think I, I did a face ID, went in and boom, tick the two tabs and nice. Um, awesome. So, um, Jan, uh, I actually was uh, speaking with Marcelo. I know he's really keen to jump on a leadership farm soon. And we, we, you and I both know um, he loves and specializes in, in, in delivering a really good talk on nano contracts. However, we haven't got Marcelo yeah. now. We've got you now. Um, what, what update could, could you give us uh, on, this, uh, on this leadership farm? Yeah, sure. Uh, we've made some very good progress on, on nano contracts. Like Marcelo has put a lot of uh, energy and effort into it. Uh, we have basically, uh, let's say, the foundation uh, ready. Um, let's say some SDKs, how we call it, for, for people to uh, be able to also write them themselves. You know, even though we're going to have the templates, you know, the uh, nano contracts off the shelf that anyone can use, uh, uh, we're also going to make uh, try to make it easier for people to write them, even though there's still a big debate on, you know, how much uh, it should enable anyone to create their own. This, this is a big debate. And I think that the next phase, which is the uh, the private, uh, the private, sorry, the test nets with the contracts is going to help us, you know, make these decisions uh, on, you know, how customizable they're going to be, uh, how accessible, how, let's say, how easy it is for anyone to, to create their own or, and even the economics part. So there's a lot uh, that, uh, you know, we're just going to do the, the base and then we're going to release them in a, in a test net. So we see how hard they're going to be used uh, to make better decisions instead of just, you know, just making decisions uh, without even testing them before or seeing them in action. Uh, obviously all in a, in a test net. Um, and after that, then it's, it's the phase that we move to the main net. But again, there's a, a very thorough process of testing them uh, before moving to the uh, to the main net. Sure, yeah, absolutely. And I know that, so I've been a main focus on uh, producing with Trond and, and the marketing team, uh, the Nano Insights. You know, we've onboarded a lot of our uh, partners uh, who will be testing. And um, yeah, as you said, the next phase uh, is test net, then it goes to full main net, public test net. Um, and I guess, you know, from what we've, what we've discussed, um, a lot of things like testnet and, and, and so on and, and bringing the community uh, developments on how testnet is going, uh, should be happening, uh, you know, really soon. Um, but yeah. yeah. And, and we also had the, uh, the first, uh, pull request, right? The first yes, uh, public, uh, pull request. I, I say public because there are a lot of pull requests already, which are private. Uh, we're working on it mainly on a private repository on GitHub. As I said before, most of the things we do publicly, but, uh, within our country, we've been developing it privately. Uh, but we had the first uh, public one, which was a library from Python. Uh, yeah. which works basically on, uh, serialization of nano contract transactions. So for those who are like more tax savvy, they can take a look at it, uh, have an idea on, on how these transactions uh, are shaped. Uh, you know, so uh, the, there was yeah, first first uh, it's it's a big milestone, I guess. First public uh, commit. Uh, guys, the first it's real. You know, it's <laughs> real. <laughs> Go and see for yourselves. It's real, and uh, no, uh, yeah, you're, you're quite right. We did have the first PR. We did briefly announce it. Again. Uh, of course, we want to bring uh, huge announcements uh, to the community soon. But the PR is an example of, hey, guys, this is real. It's out there and it's 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 here. Right. So as I said just uh, earlier with uh, uh, our testing partners and bringing content to the community, we should be bringing 
test deck uh, content through Nano Insights very soon. And um, like I said, again, I appreciate you giving us the, 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 the update you can give us. And we'll probably get, I know Marcelo definitely on the next one to give. Uh, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put, push for a, a fully focused <laughs> uh, leadership firm. Yeah, for definitely, you. definitely. Yeah, we're gonna call it nano ship firm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, thank, thank you so much. And so, Jan, uh, before we wrap up, I actually want to ask you something. So, look, you always say to me, "No, it's all out there, right? It's on the GitHub. <laughs> the, com the community yeah. can go and find it." Like when it's there and actually uh, a few community members have spotted some work surrounding an evm bridge but of course there's no context behind it but they can see it right so there's a lot of like uh guesses what what can you tell me about this evm bridge you know why are we doing it um and and anything connected to to it really like whether it's i know we've we've of course i know briefly about it but i really want to hear it from you um what does this mean? What could this mean for us? Or what can the community learn from this EVM bridge and the start that the, the, the GitHub activity that's been going on? Why is it happening? Yeah, you, you're absolutely sure. I mean, uh, it's it's public. Uh, it's it's there. I mean, we we're doing a design for a bridge between uh, EVM chains. Uh, you know, not just Ethereum, let's say, but any EVM chain uh, to Hathor network. So. Uh, the design is out there. Um, let's say it's, it's fairly close to being completed. Uh, it's kind of a, it was completed. There was a first uh, review uh, phase. Uh, anyone can see the comments there. Uh, so there is now the second stage of, you know, uh, replying to those comments, uh, reviewing this, uh, uh, the design based on the comments. But uh, yeah, this means that we're going to have a bridge between, uh, uh, for, let's say, uh, there's going to be the uh, open source code for anyone to use it. Uh, for a bridge between EVM chains and half a network. And by having that, so we do hope that uh, we have a lot of tokens being bridged, especially from EVM chains to, uh, to half a network. So let's say uh, USDC, USDT, um, ETH, BTC, no, sorry, not BTC. Uh, but uh, yeah, any uh, EVM, uh, any token on the EVM chain is going to be able to be ported uh, to half a network to be able to, you know, enjoy uh, few less transactions. And um, yeah, again, it's it's all public there. Uh, we already have the design. We have a third party company who's gonna uh, who's gonna you know make this uh, the the, uh, the code. Who's gonna code this solution? And uh, yeah, it's again very public. Uh, it's there for anyone to see. Wow, that's amazing news. Uh, well, look, th thanks for giving us an update on that. And I guess, like you said, um, it it's, it opens doors, right? And you know. You mentioned there's a there's another partner that is or it's it's almost done. I guess one one thing we should actually reiterate, which we do say quite a lot, is a lot of the work our team does, uh, our team of you know experience we have. I believe I strongly believe I've been in this industry a while, and the dev team we have is amazing. And the reason why I say it is because we are super focused on security first, right? Like. We make sure, like you said, it goes through thorough, 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 thorough checks. And with this uh, EVM bridge concept you spoke about, you just mentioned it's pretty much done. Uh, but again, you go through testing, you go through changes, you make sure it's quite perfect. And uh, and then you also mentioned that there's a third party or, or, or some sort of partner that will be building the code for it. Um, yeah. Amazing, amazing. And that, guys, that's news to me, by the way. So thanks for um, thanks for telling us that, Jan. And look, I, I think I did save the best till last, so I'm not going to take up too much of your time, Jan. I know you've got a busy schedule. Thank you so much for making time for this episode. And guys, we'll probably see Marcelo on the next one, um, although the team is super busy at the moment attending events over the, the, the next few weeks. So I'll make sure that I bring you guys as much info on those events as possible. And look, Jan, you're always welcome here. Even if we get you on another one soon after, uh, you're more yeah, than welcome. Definitely. Yeah. yeah but, I'm sure um, that there, there will be still uh, plenty to talk about. Of course, of course. Uh, again, you know, guys, there's a lot we want to talk about, a lot of new things relating to everything, tech, use cases, team. But uh, there is a time and a place, and uh, we will be bringing <laughs> that, that news to you very soon. Uh, but until then, uh, we'll see you on the next one. Yeah, have a great great day and uh, I'll speak to you shortly. Thank you. Thank you very much for everyone for watching as well. 
awesome. And by the way, great, um, great episode up with Bondex app yesterday. Whoever hasn't seen it, Jan was with them on a live stream yesterday. And um, you can catch that on our Telegram announcements or Twitter page. And, and that also goes into uh, some of uh, the reason, uh, some of the actual, uh, it was more of a tech focused and, and a breakdown of Hathor. So if you're new to Hathor and you want to know about, you know, our infrastructure, you want to know about DAG technology, blockchain, what Hathor is, it's actually a really good piece just to learn about Hathor. So do check that out as well. But guys, until the next one, Jan, it's been a pleasure. See you Thank soon. Bye-bye. Right.